In Lake Mills, mourners gather to honor fallen firefighter Chris Truman, who died serving his community. And a new law aiming for transparency may be confusing patients when it comes to pricing hospital services. This is News 3 at 6. Right now, the Lake Mills community is gathering to remember Fire Captain Chris Truman, who died after being hit while assisting a driver on the Beltline New Year's Eve. A visitation is taking place at Lake Mills High School to lay Captain Truman to rest. It started at 3 and goes until 7 o'clock today. Truman leaves behind his fiance, Amber Turfel, and her two daughters. A funeral service will be taking place tomorrow, also at the high school from 2 to 3. Meanwhile, surrounding area crews are covering shifts for the Lake Mills Fire Department. In a Facebook post, the Lake Mills Department offered a special thanks to Sun Prairie, Edgerton, and Marshall, who are all helping out so the Lake Mills firefighters can prepare and focus on this weekend's events honoring Captain Truman. Two Lake Mills businesses are holding fundraising events in honor of Captain Truman. The Lake Mills Market Grocery Store has started a donation drive in his honor, and the Culver's in Lake Mills will be holding a fundraiser on Tuesday. The restaurant said it will donate 10% of sales to the Lake Mills Fire Department. Police have an alleged robber in custody after they say he tried to rob two gas stations overnight. The first happened at the Quick Trip on the 2600 block of Fish Hatchery Road. An employee working at the time says Anthony Post entered the store with what looked like a gun. But when the employee pointed out it was a BB gun, Post left the store and robbed the Speedway station just down the street minutes later. Fitchburg police caught and arrested him as he was trying to get away. Post now faces attempted armed robbery charges in Madison and additional charges are expected in Fitchburg. It has now been nearly a week since the death of seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes, who was shot and killed in Houston, Texas, when someone opened fire on her mother's car Sunday morning. Today, a community rally was held in Jasmine's honor ahead of her funeral set for Tuesday. That funeral will be held in remembrance of Jasmine and all murder victims in the Houston area. Authorities do not have any suspects in custody at this time. There's currently a $75,000 reward for anyone who has information that could lead investigators to the person responsible. On Capitol Hill, the government shutdown continues. Tomorrow marks what will be the start of the third week of the partial government shutdown. Congressional aides and White House officials met earlier today to continue negotiations. After the meeting, the vice president's office issued a statement calling the discussions productive and both sides plan to meet again on Sunday. Yesterday, President Trump said the shutdown could last for months or even years. He also said he's willing to use emergency powers to divert Pentagon funds if necessary in order to build a border wall, which has been at the core of the shutdown disputes. The shutdown impacts about 800,000 federal workers across the nation. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said next week, House Democrats will begin passing bills to reopen government agencies, starting with the Department of Treasury and the IRS. Well, we had another sunny and mild day in the Madison area. Dave Caulfield joins us now with your first alert forecast. I could get used to this, Dave. Yeah, Amanda, with temperatures in the low 50s on January 5th, you're not going to see that very often across southern Wisconsin, but that's what we experience on this sunny Saturday. Right now, here's what it looks like in Madison on the WIC TV sky cam. Currently at 39 degrees, so we've already dropped about 10 degrees just compared to a few hours ago and starting to see a few clouds build in across southern Wisconsin. West wind at six miles per hour. Temperatures are into the 30s in Madison and in Juneau, but still in the 40s in Mineral Point and Monroe. 43 right now in Janesville. That's still about five to 10 degrees warmer compared to this time yesterday for much of the area. Temperatures and winds over the next 12 hours will be falling even further through the 30s into the mid 20s with clouds increasing this evening and into the overnight hours ahead of some rain and possibly some mixed precipitation later on Sunday. We'll explore that possibility and talk about more mild weather on the way in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Dave. A new federal rule that started on the first of the year means hospitals are now required to post prices of all the services they provide online for patients to see. That sounds helpful in theory, but healthcare officials are cautioning that the price lists aren't as consumer friendly as they should be. Our Madeline O'Neill tells us why and what other resources are already available. 
When talking health care, things can get foggy. The health care system is sort of a unique system. And as we all know, it can be expensive. So having tools to better navigate pricing comes in handy. It shouldn't be a secret. I mean, anything you buy, it shouldn't be a secret. But Brian Potter, senior vice president of finance at the Wisconsin Hospital Association, says a new federal rule requiring service pricing on hospitals' websites doesn't do much to clear up the process. It's almost like asking for the price of a car by looking at every piece and part of a car. Let's say you need a knee replacement. Complying with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services new rule, UW Health, Unity Point Health Meritor, and SSM Health all list prices you can find online. In this requirement from CMS, you wouldn't find knee replacement. It would be all the pieces, the, the supplies, all those things that make up a knee replacement. If this looks like gibberish to you, you're not alone. You also have the medical terminology. Um, you know, things are, you know, we like to call it a knee replacement, but in the medical world, they, there's probably four or five different knee replacements. Area hospitals are cautioning patients that these prices likely won't reflect what patients actually owe. Instead, prices depend more on insurance plans. There's a lot more to the consumer com component of this than what the hospital charges are. But Potter says Wisconsin residents can still find readable price transparency online. For years, the Wisconsin Hospital Association has had its own website called Price Point. A consumer can go in, compare multiple hospitals on an apples to apples comparison of a knee replacement or a colonoscopy or all of those things. Potter is anticipating more federal requirements, but for now, he's happy a conversation has been started. If this kind of new rule um, brings those topics up more and gets people more involved, that's, that's a good thing. In Madison, Madeline O'Neill, WISC News 3. You can find the link to area hospital service charges and the Wisconsin Hospital Association's price transparency website on our website, channel3000.com. Two days before his inauguration, Governor-elect Tony Evers invited area families to a children's gala. Participants came to the Madison Children's Museum to play with the exhibits, eat snacks, and enjoy music. Evers addressed children and family members while holding his granddaughter, Hannah. The event was meant to highlight the importance of education and the future of the state's youth. According to Evers, the gala is also meant to make an impact on children. These kids' uh, gala are all about several things. One, kind of bringing people together and and reinforcing the fact that education and what we do for our young people are, is exceedingly important. But we also are, are hoping that uh, some, some of the young people think about, okay, this is a really important time. Evers and Lieutenant Governor-elect Mandela Barnes will also hold a children's gala in Appleton tomorrow. The governor-elect also shared some of his plans for his first week in office, saying that while the transition has gone well so far, there's a lot to look forward to. Well, they're going to be busy issue, doing issues around the, the budget, primarily. We will be meeting with individual legislators. We're going to visit uh, uh, Lincoln Hills uh, 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 a Juvenile Facility in northern Wisconsin. And uh, primarily uh, just continue reaching out the way we are today. Evers will take the oath of office during his inauguration on Monday. Teens in the Madison area are getting the opportunity to test out careers while still in school thanks to a community partnership. The program at the Goodman Community Center called Teen Works allows high school students to train in three different career paths, culinary arts, early childhood education, and maintenance and groundwork. One participant, Tashawn Mitchell, is a junior in high school. He hopes one day to open his own restaurant. He says through the program, he gets to do what he loves, learn new skills, and meet potential employers. It feels, it feels really good to, to know that there's people there that, you know, that have our backs and want to see us do great things. Anyone between the ages of 16 and 21 working towards a high school diploma is eligible to participate in this training program. Coming up, for those that don't go above and beyond in the kitchen, that do go above and beyond, it's a staple before simple cooks like me. We aren't sure what's so special about Dutch ovens. Consumer Reports has the answer next.
They brown, boil, braise, even bake. We're not talking about the latest kitchen gadget, but rather a kitchen staple that's been around for years and millions of cooks swear by it. It's the Dutch oven. Consumer Reports just tested the do-it-all cookware and found some surprising results. Chris Lewenberg reports. Celebrity chefs like Rachel Ray swear by their Dutch oven cookware, and they use them in different ways to make a variety of dishes. So what exactly is a Dutch oven, and why do so many people love them? These pieces are essentially enameled cast iron pots with lids. They heat slowly, but they also hold their heat well, which makes them really good for braising. And the other nice thing about them is they go from the stove top to the oven to the table. Consumer Reports just tested several Dutch oven cookware pieces. Each pot holds five to six quarts, works on any type of stove top, including induction, and as you can see, come in a variety of colors. Prices range from $45 to $340. Yes, that's $340. Some of the more premium brands like Le Creuset come back with a lifetime warranty, which is a nice thing to have, but our tests actually found that you don't need to spend a lot to get great performance. Those tests include braising brisket, browning meat, and simmering sauce. Testers even baked bread in the Dutch ovens. Turns out all of the Dutch ovens did a good job braising meat, but after that, there are some differences. The Dutch oven from Aisha Curry, host of Aisha's Home Kitchen, is very easy to clean, but also the heaviest of the bunch, a whopping 15 pounds. And this Fremi Dutch oven earned an excellent rating when it came to baking bread, but it's also quite heavy, 14 pounds, and the warranty, light, just a year compared to the lifetime and limited lifetime warranties of the other Dutch ovens. The $340 Le Creuset was the only Dutch oven to earn an excellent in the browning test. But for a lot less money, this $60 Lodge delivers. It actually outperforms the Le Creuset when it comes to baking bread and offers good browning. Consumer Reports says even though porcelain enameled Dutch ovens are heavy and sturdy, they can still scratch, so don't use abrasives. When cleaning your cookware, instead clean your enamel cast iron pots with a sponge cloth or nylon scrubber in warm soapy water. For stubborn stains, soak the pot before cleaning it. Next on News 3 at 6, going the extra mile for a pretty cool birthday celebration for a special teen. And that was just the beginning. A look at the love truck drivers are still showing him. After near record warmth today, temperatures will be noticeably colder tomorrow with rain and possibly some snow on the way. Your first alert forecast is coming up after.
Truck drivers from across the state of Wisconsin are continuing to show love to a Rock County family months after they threw him a one-of-a-kind celebration. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter caught up with the CAD family today and joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with how they're doing. Adam. Well, Amanda, the last time we caught up with Dakota CAD or Bubba, a team of truck drivers from all across the Midwest were teaming up to throw him a one-of-a-kind birthday party. But in the five months that have followed, his family says the gifts haven't stopped. A team of truck drivers actually worked to build Bubba, who has cerebral palsy and Danny Walker syndrome, a wheelchair-accessible play structure. And on Christmas, donated a brand-new wheelchair, one with power tracks that can take him just about anywhere. He says, his mom says, after all the love and support the family has felt, she would like to help someone else. I think our, our feeling is we just want it to spread. We want it to be now another child. There's got to be, you know, lots of other families out there and other children that would love a truck and love to see the trucks. Over the last few months, the Cat family has also gone on a trip to Disneyland, part of a make-a-wish present that truck drivers also donated to Dakota on his birthday. Again, this all started with Dakota sitting in his yard and waving to the truck drivers as they pass by. And it's such a cute story, Adam. I understand that his mom says despite all the negative stories that we see on a daily basis, she is continually reminded of the good in the world. That's so good to hear. Mm-hmm. The planter's peanut mobile made an appearance at the Woodman's in Sun Prairie today. The vehicle is shaped like a giant 25 foot long peanut. Fun fact, the ridges on the peanut mobile are actually formed using pool noodles. It travels nationwide handing out free samples and letting shoppers meet Mr. Peanut. Its drivers say passerbys are often surprised but love to stop by and take a picture with it. Well, today was a good day for Mr. Peanut to visit the Madison area. The sun was out. It was a beautiful, Dave. Yeah, the weather was pretty nuts, Amanda. That's good for one. sure. Thank you very much. With <laughs> temperatures in the low 50s, insanely mild today. And what better to go with an insanely mild day than an insanely beautiful sunset pick from Wanakee. Thanks, Brian, for sending this in. High temperatures today for many of us did end up in the low 50s, 50 even in Madison, 52 in Janesville and 50 in Platteville and Lone Rock as well. Others in the upper 40s, but still way milder than normal for this time of year. Downtown Madison, the Edgewater Skycam, those temperatures are in the 30s at, right now, but Earlier, they were at 50, and that's basically double what we should be for this time of year. 26 degrees is where we should be, and when you compare it to last year, the comparisons just become even more insane. For today, the high temperature last year at this time, 8 degrees today. 50 in Madison, just absolutely staggering. I mentioned those temperatures already into the upper 30s because we're losing that daytime heat and not too many clouds to help keep that heat close to the surface of the earth just yet. 42 in Lone Rock, 41 right now in Mineral Point, still at 43 in Janesville. Still running about 5 to 10 degrees warmer compared to this time yesterday. Our high temperature trend, at least in the short term, is a little bit all over the place. Only in the upper 30s tomorrow, so noticeably chillier. Back to 50 on Monday with rain and wind, and then in the 30s Tuesday and close to normal on Wednesday and Thursday before some snow is possible by the time we get to Friday and Saturday. For tonight, though, we're becoming mostly cloudy with temperatures in the mid-20s. For tomorrow, breezy and colder with some rain and possibly some mixed precipitation developing during the evening hours and into early on Monday. So future tracks staying pretty quiet overnight. The clouds will be on the increase. Highs will be in the upper 30s on Sunday. Then as we start off our Monday morning, our models are continuing to hint at maybe a short period of time where some rain and snow mixes in at times before temperatures warm up enough pretty quickly on Monday to just get rain. It will be windy and some of that rain could be coming down pretty heavy at times about a half an inch to possibly close to an inch of rain as possible by the time we get to the end of Monday. So that is something to keep a close eye on as well. Your seven day forecast those temperatures in the 20s and 30s for the middle of next week. And then we do have a chance of seeing some snow by the time we get to Friday and Saturday with temperatures close to the freezing mark. We got our first look at future Badger quarterback Graham Mertz today. We'll show you highlights from his record setting performance. That's next in sports.
Well, future Wisconsin quarterback Graham Mertz isn't scheduled to arrive on campus until next week, but he is certainly proving that the hype surrounding him is for reals. He played at the All-American Bowl today, a game featuring 100 of the best high school seniors in the country. Now, he didn't just casually play in the game. He dominated. In the first half, airing it out to Dominic Blaylock, he's heading to Georgia for a 57-yard touchdown play to put East up first. 7-0. And that was just the beginning. He ended up completing 7 of 14 passes for 188 yards and 5 touchdowns, setting the record for passing yards and touchdown passes in the bowl game. And as for his efforts, well, he was named the MVP of the All-American Bowl, leading the East to a 48-14 win. The Badgers men's hockey team will aim to split the series against 8th-ranked Denver tonight at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin lost 6-3 last night in the opening game of the series, and also the team's first time back on the ice in 2019 puck drops at 7 o'clock. The men's basketball team making its way to Pennsylvania today for their game against the Nittany Lions tomorrow night at 6.30. The team aiming to bounce back after losing back-to-back -back games for the first time this season. History working in their favor, though. Wisconsin has won 10 in a row over Penn State, including six consecutive wins on the road. So consistency will be key when it comes to getting wins, according to head coach Greg Gard. I don't like to always pinpoint one specific person and say that's the reason why we didn't have success tonight. It's a, it's a team, you know, and we'll find things that we do really well together and then there's things that we, we got to get better at and trying to become consistent. That's what we talked about after the game. It's, you know, we've, we've done some really good things, but we've got to put, continue to play at a higher level for a complete 40 minutes and, um, and then we'll get the results we want to get. Other Big Ten action today, Michigan State at Ohio State. Urban Meyer fresh of a bowl victory taking in the game. Second half action, Spartans down two. Cassius Winston knocks down the three, 25 points for him. Six minutes to go, tied at 66. Winston feeds Nick Ward down low for the lay-in and one. Ward with 21 today, Spartans up three. Three minutes left, Michigan State up three. Kenan, Kenny Goins misses the jumper, but Kyle Aaron's there for the cleanup. Michigan State wins 86 to 77. The Bucks aiming for win number six in a row tonight against the Raptors. Toronto just a half game behind Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference standings. The Raptors though coming off of a loss to the Spurs. The Bucks, meanwhile, if you caught this, this was a huge 144 to 112 win over the Hawks last night. Granted, Atlanta isn't really playing a good ball this season overall, but the Bucks still dominating in all aspects of the game. Tip off at 7:30 at Fiserv. Some news off the hot stove: the Brewers trade. And Keon Broxton to the Mets in exchange for right-handed pitchers of Bobby Ball and Adam Hill and infielder Felix Valerio. Pitchers and catchers, believe it or not, it's almost, it's a little more than a month away. They report on February 15th, but today felt like spring training weather anyways, right? Oh yeah, felt like spring. Yeah, temperatures were in the 50s today and typically we hit 50 on April 1st, but this was not an April Fool's Day joke. We are in the upper 30s right now in Madison and those temperatures are going to continue to tumble through the 30s into the mid 20s to start off tomorrow. Noticeably colder tomorrow with cloudy skies, highs will be in the mid to upper 30s. Then some rain and snow showers late Sunday before rain showers and wind on Monday, but those temperatures back to 50 Monday, but then into the 30s and 20s for Tuesday and Wednesday. For reminding us it is winter. Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks Dave, and thanks for joining us. Have a great night. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.